What's going on, everybody? I'm Andres. And I'm Nazareth. And welcome back to AO Kids Sunday School Live. We're so excited that you guys are here with us today. That's right. We can't wait for this lesson with you guys. It's going to be an awesome Sunday today. Guess what this is? What is it? It's just my favorite teddy bear. It's an orangutan. Orangutans are my favorite. They are? Yeah, but here's my favorite teddy bear. His name is Teddy. Hi, Mr. Orangutan. So I want you guys really quick to get up, get your teddy bear real quick, your favorite one, and come and bite it to watch AO Kids Sunday School Live with you today. Yes, what's your favorite teddy bear? Do you guys have any teddy bears on your bed? Do you guys sleep with teddy bears? I know I grab my orangutan and I hug him and I cuddle with him and I give him a bunch of besitos de amor. That's so cute. Well, we hope you guys are enjoying your cuddle time with your teddy bear. <laughs> but right now, that's enough fun. Why don't we get on our feet? Let's stand up for Praise and worship! Say his name, watch the darkness slip away. Put your power on display. Say goodbye to fear and shame. It's one of my favorite parts of AO Kids Sunday School Live. Me too. So, you know, last week we talked about a really important guy. That's right. And his name is Noah. That's right. So, really quickly, before we move on, why don't you guys grab a paper and a pen and let's write notes of the recap of last week's video. Okay, let's go over it. Number one, God wants us to be righteous like Noah. That's right. Number two, God gives us the strength to choose right over wrong. And number three, be the Noah in your world, meaning be the righteous and good person in your world. That's right. Last week's message was so amazing. That's right. It was about being different. But you know what today's topic is? What? It's called be obedient. <gasps> Please tell me that we're still talking about Noah. We are, but while we're on this topic, we have a friend with a verse just for us. Take it away, Derek. 
Hey kids, I'm Derek and I just wanted to let you know if I could share a verse with you. Is that okay? Is that cool? Cool. The verse for today is John 1st 5 3rd and the verse says This is love for God to keep his commands and his commands are not burdensome for everyone born of God overcomes the world. Thank you. Now can you repeat after me? Thank you. This is love for God to keep his commands and his commands are not burdensome for everyone born of God overcomes the world thank you for repeating after me this verse actually means that we are the child of God and if we're the child of God, we have to listen to God, to our parents. We don't have to listen to no more people. We have to fin listen to our family, our siblings, our older cousins, to everyone, except the strangers outside, except the devil. You never have to listen to the devil. But God, if, if you are God, it's going to do something. Because God is always 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 gonna be in your heart he will always love you and he's always gonna protect you so you have to listen to everyone we're the child of god and we're the child of god we have to listen because god's favorite thing is to keep his commands because his commands are not hard it's easy we only have to listen we don't have to do no more things only listen well, I hope you like the verse. Now take it away, Nazareth and Andres. Thank you, Derek. That was so amazing. I love that verse so much. And because you love it so much, why don't we go over it one more time? I want you guys to repeat after me. Let's say it all together. Here we go. Are you ready? This. This. Is love for God. Is love for God. To keep. To keep. His commands. His commands. And His commands. And His commands. Are not burdensome. Are not burdensome. For everyone. For everyone. Born of God. Born of God. Overcomes. Overcomes. The world. The world. And that's 1 John 5, 3 through 4. Wow, so that verse is amazing. That's right. And you know, Noah, it's a crazy, crazy good story. I know. I heard that he built a big big gigantic boat but don't give it all up away for the kids oh. well, we're gonna show you guys right now just look over here this is Noah Noah is in the Hall of Fame because he listened to God God created the whole universe he created the Sun and moon and stars the sky above and the sea below God created the animals and the people over time, the people on Earth began to do bad things because they didn't listen to God. There was only one man in all the Earth who was different because he listened to God. That man was Noah. So God told Noah to build an ark. He told Noah exactly how to build the ark, and it was to be the biggest boat ever built. God told Noah to build an ark for his family and the animals to live on during the flood. When the ark was ready, God told Noah to load everyone into the large boat. They entered in pairs, each with another of its kind. Whoa! Whoa! Do you know how cool you have to be in order to build a huge boat? Not only that, but Noah, he must have been a really good guy. And you know, really good people deserve fist bump! Fist bump! That's right. Noah was so amazing, and you know God loved Noah so much. He was so special to God. That's right. Last week, we talked about being different and being like Noah because he was different from everybody else. Right, because he lived in a time where the world was so bad and dark and so many bad things were going on, but Noah was that light. He was that good person, the person that God could count on. That's so true, and you know what? Being like Noah, we're going to keep on talking about that. It's not only being different, but what, you know what Noah was after he was different? What? He was obedient. 
Yeah, that's right. And obedience is such a key thing. God wants obedience from all of us. And he asks all of us to be obedient in many different ways. Do you remember how God asked Noah to be obedient? He asked him to build a whole huge ship in the middle of the dry land. I know. They say that during that time, it wasn't raining. And everyone was like, and Noah was saying all this stuff about how God told him that it was going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights and there was going to be a huge flood. And nobody believed him. But you know what? Noah was still obedient. That's so true. And you know, he had crazy obedience. That's like trying to build a whole car out in the ocean. Or that's like when it's super sunny and there's not a cloud in the sky, him bringing an umbrella. He just looks crazy. A giant boat in the middle of the land. What is he doing? And you know, how does somebody have obedience that's that big, that's that crazy? I know. Can you imagine how hard it was for Noah? I mean, everyone was probably talking bad about him, saying that he was crazy. He probably himself probably had some doubts here and there saying like, wait, like, can you imagine like I'm building this whole big boat and what if it doesn't rain? Well, you know what? I believe that crazy obedience needs crazy faith. That's a really big point because without Noah believing in God and believing that God was actually going to complete what he said, then Noah would have been building that boat for really no reason. That's so true. And you know, having crazy faith, it means that just believing and trusting in God, even when you don't see a way out, even when you don't see the rain coming anytime soon. And not even that, but it's also believing in God when everybody else is telling you not to. You see, Noah was probably hearing all these stuff like, no, like that's not going to happen. You're crazy. Why are you building a boat when we're in the middle of a drought? But Noah had that crazy faith to still listen to God by building that bow. You know, I have a story about how one time I showed crazy faith in God. <gasps> Tell me. So me and my friends, we were out and we went to the park together and we went to the skate park, right? Mm -hmm. We like to skateboard like this. And but my friend, while we were skating, he fell down, he hurt his leg, he scraped his knee and he was really hurt, right? Mm. And it sucks because we really, really wanted all to go to Burger King. <gasps> I love Burger King. To get a Whopper. And, um, but we're like, okay, let's go skate to Burger King, let's get to Burger King. And all my friends wanted to go, except for this one friend. Who? His name was Eddie. Oh, okay. But we did not want to leave him alone because he's one of our good friends and we all wanted to eat together. And mm -hmm. it was going to be a little adventure, but he was going to be all alone in the park. Yeah, that's kind of sad. So he was being really annoying, like, no, I don't want to go, no, I don't want to go. But even though I understand, because he kind of hurt his leg. But we, I prayed, I prayed to God, I said, God, please. I know I believe in you. I know you're there. Please listen to me and help me find a way so all of us can get to Burger King. <gasps> and so I prayed, and then we keep asking, and he still doesn't want to go. He still doesn't want to go. We say, please. He says, nah, man, I don't want to go right now. Nah, man, I'm not really even hungry. Nah, man, whatever, this and that. And I was like, you know what? Fine. And, you know, I'm going to believe in God, but I'm just going to start going, and I know that God will come through. And so I get on my skateboard, and I start going towards, going towards Burger King. But in the parking lot, all of a sudden, walking out of the car, I see... My own dad. Your dad? That's right. My dad was there, Nelson. And he walks out of the car and he's like, Andres, hey. And I was like, whoa, dad, what are you doing here? And he's like, well, I just came to say hi to you guys. And I want to see if you guys wanted me to take you anywhere. <gasps> I was like. And, That's amazing. And thanks to that, he was able to put us all in his car and we all went to Burger King. It's literally like God answered your prayer. That's right. And, you know, if Edward what is, what wouldn't have, wasn't complaining and being annoying and didn't want to go for all that time, we would have left already and we would have, and my dad would have came and nobody would have been there. But because I had faith in God, it all worked out for the best. That's right. You, it wasn't just the fact that you prayed, but it was the fact that you had faith that God was going to make that prayer come true. Mm -hmm. And it, that was just like Noah. And let me tell you, I thanked God for that Whopper. Mm, that Whopper was probably super yummy. Fist yep. pump? Fist pump. You know what? We should get a Whopper after AO Kids Sunday School service. Sounds good to me. So, this is really important. Yeah. But in order to be obedient to somebody, right, they have to give you instructions, <gasps> right? Right, because you have, be, and being obedient is listening to what people, well, what your authorities say. Yeah, and Noah was obedient to God. But that's probably hard, right? Because how do you even know that God is speaking to you? That's such a great question. Sometimes we can't even tell or we don't know if God is really speaking to us. Yeah. But you want me to tell you how you know that? Yeah, how? The first step is always growing closer to Him. 
That's right. Because, for example, close your eyes. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Open your eyes. Okay. We're best friends, right? Um. Sure. <gasps> hmm, you're mm. neglecting me. No, no, mm. no. I'm. A, let's try that again. I'm gonna ask you again. Okay. We're best friends, right? Yes. Good answer. Correct answer. All right. Now, close your eyes. Okay. All right. This is a tricky question. Okay. But who's speaking? Nazareth. Nazareth. Now open your eyes. How do you know I was speaking? Because I know your voice, duh. That's right. Because we're best friends and because we talk all the time. And that's how God works. God, when He speaks to you, like over time, we got to get closer and closer to God because we have to be able to recognize God's voice. And the only way to do that is by the same way you recognize your best friend's voice. After talking to them so many times and getting to know the way that they speak to you, over time, it gets easier and easier to recognize their voice. That's so true. And you know what? God can speak to us in, in many, many ways. That's but right. number one, you know what it's going to be? What? Through His Word, the Bible. Yeah, that's right. Because God, before He left, He made sure that we would have that. We would have a Bible, His Word, so that we could be able to have that relationship with Him, and so that He could be, so He could be able to talk to us and let us know what He wanted from us. If you don't have a Bible, you have to ask your mom, beg your mom, beg your dad, whoever can buy for your birthday. Ask your tia, your abuela, your abuela probably get what you want. Ask, yes. Uh, uh, you know, tia, tita, get me a Bible, please, because you guys please, need please, to read please. what's in there. And the Bible is amazing. It's something that you're going to use all your life. You're going to see that the Bible has so many answers to the questions that you may be wondering. And Noah used the Bible too, the same way that we should. That's not, not only that, but it's also a really great book. Like, can you think, what's your favorite book that's not the Bible? Hmm. Mine is probably, when I was younger, I really liked the Percy Jackson series. You know... When I was younger, I used to read all the Arthur books. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever read the Dork Diaries? Dork Diaries? You never no, read? but I read Captain Underpants. Oh, you know which ones were good? The Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Those were really, really good. But guess what? The Bible is better than, than all, of, all those books of those combined. books combined. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Fist pump. Fist pump. So we grow closer to God so we can know His voice, so know when He talks, read our Bibles. Mm -hmm. And you know, all of this, so God speaks to us, He gives us instructions, He tells us things to do. But why should we even be obedient? You know, that's a really big question because I can just imagine what if Noah wasn't obedient? Noah had such a big part in what's going to happen next in his story. Mm -hmm. Because if Noah wasn't obedient, then I'm pretty sure all life on earth would have ended. Oh my and goodness. not even life, but the animals. Mm. That's why God needed him to build a big, big boat for what's going to mm. happen next week. That's right. And you know, just because of Noah's you know, crazy faith and crazy obedience, he was able to impact so many lives, you know, That's even right. up until today. So you know, sometimes your little act of obedience can be a huge blessing for somebody else. That's right. And you know, what was even harder about, God, uh, about Noah being obedient was the fact that Noah, while he was being obedient, um, he didn't probably see why God wanted him to build a boat, but God had a bigger plan. So sometimes it's not only having to, you don't need to understand everything in the process. You just need to listen to what God is saying and trust that God knows what he's doing. That's so true. And, you know, being obedient is just listening to, you know, those instructions and, you know, doing them, going through with it. But, you know, Sometimes we don't really get you know, such huge uh, requests from God, like build a huge, huge boat. But you know what, we, what does happen? What? There's so many ways that you can be obedient in your world today. That's right. Like honoring your father and mother. Oh my gosh, that's one of the Ten Commandments. That's right. And that's something that God wants from us. He asks that for us. And He tells us that when we honor our mother and father, we will live a long and everlasting life. That's so good. And you know that, you know, honoring your father and mother means not only obeying them, but respecting them, you know, not trying to talk back that much. Yes. It's, it's, you know, listening to them. It's, you know, trying to help out around the house, do your mm -hmm. chores, do your homework. There's so many ways you can honor your father and mother, make them proud. That's right. And God really wants that from us. And, you know, number two, one of the really important ways, especially here in the USA. 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 U.S. Fist Pump! We need to obey the laws of the land. 
That's right. God not, said not only obey your father and mother, not only obey me, but obey the government, the people that are above you, your authorities. That's right. Especially here in the USA, since we live in such a, you know, good constitutional democracy, we have good laws. You know, things are set in place to protect us and yes. protect each other. And, you know, these laws, most of the time, they're going to be something that's good for us. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you can't go around speeding everywhere at 100,000 miles per hour because mm -hmm. you're going to crash and you're going to, you know, you're not going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, stuff like, you know, you don't want to, you're not allowed to go up to somebody and just punch them in the face. Oh, no. You can't do that. You know, so as long as you're obeying the laws, you know, obeying the authority that's been put above you, you know, you'll be all right. That's right. And also, number three, God wants us to show love to others. There's so many things in the Bible that God asks us, for, for, asks us to do, but one of them is that He wants us to show love to others. Those, your, your classmates, your friends, anyone that you encounter on a daily basis, show love, the love that God has shown to you. That's right. You know, God's love is true love. Reminds me of that song that goes, This is real love. This, this is, is real love. love. Oh. oh. Okay. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, 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 oh. I my, love that song. That's one of my favorites. I remember back, you know, BC, before Corona, we, <laughs> we used to get together and dance that song all the time at AO Church. And it was the best. Fist it was pump? Fist pump. <laughs> we miss you guys so, so much. I know. We wish we could get together and jump and dance and do so many fun things with you guys. But very soon, because <laughs> God has everything in control. Amen, amen. So, you know, God calls us to love each other, you know, the way that He loved us. And how did He love us? He loves us unconditionally. He loves us, which means no matter what, He loves us, mm -hmm. no matter our faults, no matter our skin color, no matter our, you know, our crazy past. And he loves us even though we don't deserve it. That's he loves right. us even though, you know, we mess up. He loves us even though we might be mean to him, or even though we might disobey him from time to time. He still loves us, and that's the way that we should love each other. That's right. And if you want to learn more about what God wants from you and what he's expecting from you, just read his word and spend more time with him. Because God, the closer that he gets to you, the more he's going to reveal from what he wants from your life. And that's how you can please God, which is what we want to do. It's been a lot of stuff. But why don't we go over everything one more time? Right, so make sure that you guys have your paper and pencils and make sure that you jot this down. Jot this down, write it down, pause if you need to. This video is always gonna be available for you to come back to. All our videos are on YouTube if you ever missed a video. Just type in AO Kids with a Z and it'll pop up. If you see my face, give it a like, subscribe. Uh, subscribe <laughs> and turn on post notifications. <laughs> okay, so number one. Crazy obedience needs crazy faith. <gasps> That's right. Number two, we need to be close to God to hear Him. And number three, God wants us to obey. That's right. God wants all of that from us. And you know, it's so good being in this, you know, world where God loves you, where God is in your heart, where God can, you know, speak to you. But we can't have that unless we accept Jesus into our hearts. That's right. But how do we accept Jesus in our heart? It's a really quick, simple, easy prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do it anytime in your life. You're, you know, you're never too young right now. You can do it right now. Yeah, and God wants you to do this prayer. That's right. God wants you to, you know, give him to say, you know, God, my life is yours. Do what you please. God, I want to live for you. And it's just one simple prayer. And all you have to do is repeat after me. Let's do it. All right, believe this with your heart. Are you ready, guys? Let's bow your heads, close your eyes, you know, so no distractions. And say, dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. I come to you. I come to you. A sinner. A sinner. Asking. Asking. For forgiveness. For forgiveness. Lord. Lord. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. To be my Lord. To be my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. Write my name. Write my name. In the book of life. In the book of life. So I see you. So I see you. One day. One day. In heaven. In heaven. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Fist pump. Fist pump. So if that was you sitting there and you just did this prayer, we want to get to know you more. So on that website that you're on, there's a there's a button that says prayer faith. Press that button if that was you so we can get to know you more. That's right. And if 
you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to visit AOMiami.org and go under the AO Kids section. We have so many things for you to see. That's right, activities and many more. So right now on your screen, you're seeing a number. Right now we want to give this opportunity to you to grab your phone, your mom's phone, uh, your dad's phone, anyone's phone really, and you guys can text us right now to ask us any questions that you may have about today's lesson. And these, these questions are coming to this phone right here. <gasps> And we want you guys to ask us anything. We're going to answer it right now live. We are super excited. And we are getting, they are coming in. They're already coming in? Yes, you guys are quick. I wish I was that fast. Oh my goodness. I can, I can type pretty fast. Really? Can you type with your eyes closed? Yes, but I'm not very proud of it. Yeah, that's that's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> Shame on you. Yeah, I think I spent too much twirl. time on my phone. Not good. I'm okay, okay, we have we have I'm enough twirling. questions. I'm still twirling. No, we have enough questions. The kids twirl. are waiting for their answers. Okay, fine, let's do it. All right, here it is. Ready? Question number one. I got dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> Why would someone be disobedient to God? <gasps> That's a good question. That is a good question, and you know, usually the answer is that these people they don't really know God. And you know, there's so many people out there that are sinning, that are doing bad things, that are hurting others. And you know, they might not know God, or if they do, they don't believe in Him. But you know, it's not, you know, it's not up to us to control everything they do, but it's up to us to show them that love, show them who God really is, and you know, inspire them and invite them to church. And you know, being disobedient to God, you know, it's, it's, it's not good, but we do what we can. We pray for them and you know, just keep continuing to show them the love of God. That's right. And sometimes people that do love God also are disobedient to God. And the reason why is because since we don't see God, it's easy to be disobedient to God. That's why God gave us our parents. That's why He wanted us to be obedient to our parents. Amen. Because how are we supposed to be obedient to God, someone that we can't physically see, if we can't even be obedient to your parents? So that's why it's super important to practice being obedient with your parents because that's how you can be obedient to God. That's right. Okay, question number two, super important if you guys didn't know, is disobedience a sin? <gasps> yes, disobedience is a sin. It's actually the first sin that happened here on earth. So disobedience is something that God does not want. It goes completely, completely against his heart because God wants us to listen to his word. That's right. You know, God gave Adam and Eve an explicit order to just, you know, don't eat this specific tree, uh, fruit from this tree. Mm -hmm. And they still did it and, you know, they messed up. Mm -hmm. And you know, this obedience, disobedience can you know, lead to so many more problems as we saw mm -hmm. back in our Adam and Eve series. That's right. All right, and question number three. Why is being obedient so important? <gasps> well, you know, I'll give you one example. You know, because Noah was so good, because he was so obedient, it wasn't just him and his wife on the ship. Mm -hmm. Actually, he inspired his whole family and their wives. You know, all of them were able to be saved and come to the ship with them, right? Come mm -hmm. on the ark with them. And, you know, because he was so obedient, because he was so good, he was able to be a blessing for those people too. That's right. So sometimes your obedience has rewards, has blessings to it. You know what I mean? So just like Noah was obedient, he got to save his whole family. That's right. And you know, being obedient is super important. You always want to try your best to be as obedient as possible. Stay within the rules, stay within, you know, the instructions that I've been giving to you. And you know, as long as you do that, you'll be all right because, you know, Jesus, it's what Jesus says and what Jesus says matters. <gasps> do you hear that? Oh my goodness, you know what that means. Game, Game time! time! So what are we playing today? Today we have a very special game. It's called Balloon Cup Race. Balloon, huh? Balloon cup race. Let me explain to you how to play really quick. So we're gonna have a balloon. Okay. We're gonna blow it up as big as you can, and then you're gonna- As big as we can. Okay, maybe not that big. Maybe like this big. Okay. And then That's we're gonna tie it up, and once we tie it up, you have to find a way to pop it. Pop it? Pop it. <gasps> and after you pop it, whoever finishes popping it first, we're gonna go, you're gonna pick up this baseball. This the, baseball? Not baseball, this bat. <gasps> And then you're gonna go like this, and you're gonna spin around, go around five complete times. And then after that, we're gonna drink water from a cup and then flip it. Whoever lands it first wins. Fine, let me go get the water cups. Okay, I'm gonna move these chairs. Let's do it. I got some water. <gasps> My orangutan! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. Okay, here we go. All right, so here's our water. Do you have a balloon? 
I have a balloon right here. Me too. Mine is orange. Mine is blue, my favorite color. You know what this means? What? Orange is for winners. No. Yes, it is. No. Blue is for luster. No, it's not. Don't say that. Blue <laughs> is beautiful like the sky and the ocean. All the colors are beautiful because God made them. Okay. All right, so okay. we're so, going to count this down. So I blow up the balloon, I tie it, I pop it. Uh huh. Then whoever grabs the baseball gets it first, go five times, uh -huh. drink the water, yep. flip the cup. Yep. All right. Are you ready? I'm a little nervous. Here we go. Count us down. Make sure nobody cheats. Make sure she ties it and actually pops it. Hold on. Let me practice my lungs. Practice your lungs? You don't know how to breathe or something? I have to practice. <laughs> one okay. more time. One more okay, time. Okay. 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 I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, you're done? Okay. Okay. Here we go. Are you ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. <gasps> This big. Oh my goodness. It took me 10 years to learn how to tie my shoes. How am I gonna tie a balloon? No. Ha ah. <laughs> ha, you're too light. Did I do it? Ah. No, I'm still tying. Oh my god, no, my goodness, how do I do this? One, two, three. Ah, this is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, Whoa. no, Whoa. no, no. Okay, I got it. Whoa. Okay, I got it. <laughs> Whoa. I got dizzy. How do I pop this? I'm <laughs> dizzy. I got it, I got it. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Oops. Oh, wow. That's. <laughs> I won! I won! <laughs> That's the first game I've won on AOK <laughs> Service Live. <laughs> this is a big accomplishment. <laughs> good job. <laughs> Like a good sportsman, make sure you guys shake hands. No, no, you know what's better than shaking hands? What? Fist bump. But you know what's even more fun than that game? Tell me. It's when we get up. Get on our feet. And praise, praise and, and worship. worship.
Wow, that was so, so fun. I love that song. What did you guys think about yesterday at our back to school drive-in movie? It was amazing. It was I so fun. I literally got all the supplies that I needed for school. That's right. We hope you guys were there. We were so nice seeing so many of your faces, even if it was through the windows of our cars. I know, and the movie was amazing. It was so good. I was, you could not miss it. Soul Surfer, amazing. I know, I loved it. I, I cried. No. That reminds me of the last time I cried because I missed Baby Turbo. I know, I haven't seen him anywhere. <laughs> Could you guys spot him this? Could you guys spot him this lesson? Please tell us where he is. Because we lost him. We lost him. <laughs> also, we have announcements for you guys. On on Tuesday. In two days. We have connect groups going on on Zoom just for you. Where we want you guys to get connected. That's right. We want you guys to get, you know, to get connected. We want you guys to be in there, to be, you know. Um, interactive, to be <laughs> learning, to be making friends. That's right. So many um, benefits to joining our connect groups. That's right. And also on Fridays, we have our live stream services where we want you guys to join. Tune in, watch our services because we want you guys there. We have those services for you guys. That's right. And you know, maybe if you have an older brother, older sister in high school, tell them to come on over because Next Level is open for them. That's right. And also, we have registration open for... JKC Jesus Kids Club! It's so much fun. It's gonna be so great. You guys don't wanna miss this. You know, I can't emphasize it enough. Parents, if you're watching, make sure you sign up for your kids. Go visit aomiami.org. Visit our Jesus Kids Club. We gotta get registered right away. If you wanna grow in the faith, grow closer to God, grow and learn more about Jesus and about our walk in faith, Join Jesus Kids Club because you learned all about Bible 101. There's no better way to make so many friends. There's no better way to learn your Bible and, you know, grow up in the faith. That's right. So all this information, like where do I get the connect group information? Where do I get the Friday service live? Where do I register for Jesus Kids Club? You can either go to our Instagram, AO underscore kids with a Z, or go to aomiami.org under the AO Kids section to find all of that information. Is this a Z? How do you... I don't know, to be honest. But before we go, should we do one last fist, fist bump? bump? And one for you guys. Fist pump.